Hi everybody, I am here with my second ultrasound update. Um, this whole time I've been super stressed out waiting for this ultrasound to find out if I'm still pregnant. Um, I know uh, a lot of people are excited and you know just thinking like, oh I can't wait to see the baby again and mine is like please let the baby still have a heartbeat kind of thing going on. And we're still trying to find out if there is uh, the second embryo is hiding ectopically somewhere. So we got the ultrasound and their baby's still there. We didn't get to hear the heartbeat yet or anything. Um, but she did say it was 162 beats per minute and the baby's measuring 7 weeks and 5 days. So that's supposed to be really good. So this baby just looks like a little blob. But here is the baby right there. It's about the size of a blueberry. It's 14 millimeters and then this is a picture of baby with its heartbeat. So there's baby, there's the heartbeat. So that was exciting but the ultrasound tech that I had didn't understand that we were looking to, for an ectopic, that I'm on ectopic watch. Um, it was ridiculous and it was just, I think there was a language barrier because I, for English she had a little trouble with like understanding some of the things I was saying. So I think that was part of it, but she didn't know what an IUI was. I don't think she understood what IVF was. Um, I basically told her the whole story about how I had an IUI and my tube ruptured and how we did IVF and we implanted two embryos and uh, we know that one stuck, but we're just looking for the other one to make sure there's not a mass somewhere in the tubes or around the ovaries or anything. So I went through this whole thing with her, and she did all her pictures, and then she showed me the baby, and then brought my husband in, and uh, that was all fine. And she said, yeah, baby looks really good and everything, and I said, so it doesn't look like there's uh, ectopic anywhere? And she's like, no, your baby's in the uterus. You can't have ectopic. And I was like okay she didn't understand what I was saying I'm like yes I know there's a baby in the uterus but we had two embryos implanted and we just want to make sure the other one is an ectopic and so then she started looking and she's like oh well I, I'll check again and then she is looking for twins she's like I don't see another baby and I was like we're not we understand one baby stuck like we have one baby um, but we're trying to figure out if there's an ectopic hiding somewhere or and or if the other embryo maybe it dissolved or went away but maybe it implanted outside the uterus or on an ovary or in the tube and it's ectopic that's what we're trying to find out and she's like no 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 I think you're good your baby baby's in the uterus <sighs> oh I was getting so frustrated so anyway as soon as we got out of that appointment, me and my husband just kind of like ranted to each other because it's like, I explained myself like over and over again. I don't know how much clearer I could have been. And it says right on my ultrasound thing from the fertility clinic that I'm on ectopic watch. But she couldn't figure out how I would have an ectopic pregnancy if my baby's in my uterus. Well, yes, the one baby is, but the other embryo, we're hoping just went away and it didn't implant somewhere that it shouldn't have so I called the fertility clinic right away after saying like I think I might need to get an ultrasound done at your clinic um, in Calgary they have an ultrasound their fertility clinics on one floor and the ultrasound place is on the other so they deal with all the fertility people so they're really well, well rehearsed and they know what they're talking about um, and that's where we did our first ultrasound where they didn't see anything and they did an internal but yeah, the baby measured five weeks, five days, but they just wanted to make sure, no kitty, um, they just wanted to make sure that uh, um, it wasn't too small and they missed it. And that's basically why I was doing the seven week ultrasound, um, which ended up being seven weeks, five days, because that's as soon as they could get me in, because Calgary's like an hour and a half about from where I live so to go drive an hour and a half to scan ultrasound every time is ridiculous when Red Deer is like 20 minutes from where I live so why wouldn't I go into Red Deer and get my ultrasounds done there but um, if this is how it's going to be and they're not really understanding or knowing what's going on or what they're doing then I'll drive to Calgary every time 
So, anyway, that's my ultrasound story. I'm still pregnant. The baby's measuring right on par. And that's the other thing. She kept, like, trying to figure out, like, when the first day of my last missed period was. And she didn't want to go off of the egg transfer day. She wanted to go off of the egg retrieval day. And the fertility clinic had already given me my due date, which is March 31st. So they'd already given me my due date. I knew my due date. I told her my due date. And still she was like trying to figure out my due date. And then once they did, she took it to the doctor or whatever to look at. Um, she's like, it's measuring five weeks and seven, seven weeks and five days, which means your due date's March 31st. And I'm like, yes, I know my due date's March 31st. So it was just, it was a frustrating visit, and so if that's how it's going to be, I'm definitely just going to drive to Calgary for my other ultrasounds. Um, the other thing that happened is I got a specialist doctor finally, so that was a huge relief. Um, I had to get a ref referral in. Basically, I called the doctor who did my ectopic surgery, told me that I was her patient for life, that once I get pregnant, to call and book an appointment with her. So as soon as I get pregnant, I call, and they say... The secretary is like, no, you have to get a referral. And I'm like, uh, what? So anyway, I was freaking out. Um, but the doctor did call. I went to the doctor, got a referral. And usually referrals take like six months to a year. But they called and I got an appointment booked September 9th. So that's a huge relief. I have a specialist doctor now. So I don't have to worry about that. And she's really good. And I trust her. And she's the one who dealt with my surgery and all that. So that's really good. Um, as for pregnancy symptoms, I don't have any, um, which is one of the reasons why I've been freaking out if I'm pregnant or not, because my boobs were a little sore and tender, um, they're not really anymore. I've been tired, but no nausea, no food cravings, no food aversions, no, uh, my sense of smell hasn't increased, nothing. Uh, just a little, just tired and I get hot easier um, which kind of has gone away the last couple days but before that it was like getting really hot and like having the fan on and the windows open and everything but it also is summer here and we don't have air conditioning so uh, yeah so I've had zero pregnancy symptoms um, I guess it's kind of a blessing no nausea no morning sickness none of that um, my acupuncturist said that if I haven't had them by now, I'm probably not going to get them, but you never know. So for pregnancy updates, I'll probably do them probably every two weeks. I'm thinking probably not every week, uh, cause I, unless I have something to report on. So probably every two weeks. Um, I just told my parents tonight about it. So, uh. They just found out. Um, my mom was like over excited, over the moon. I had to kind of rein her in a little bit. And my dad, he was like, yeah. That's what he did when we showed him the picture. Um, my mom was like, oh my god. And jumping up and hugging and kissing and all that. But um, kind of reined her in. We don't want to tell any of my extended family yet. Uh, like any of my aunties, uncles, cousins, grandparents. Um, it's just a very stressful time. We don't actually know if we're going to have the baby. Like, I'm still in the first trimester. Anything could happen. Uh, yes, there's a chance that I will have the baby, but I don't have a baby yet. I'm just pregnant, and as a lot of you know, things can happen. You can have a miscarriage. Things go wrong. I could still have an ectopic and not know it and have to get surgery, and then somehow the surgery makes it so that you that I lose the baby as well. Like, there's just so many factors that could... Uh, get into it. So I am feeling cautiously optimistic. I'm feeling like I have an 80, about an 80% chance of having this baby. Um, that's kind of where my head's at. My husband is, he thinks that something's going to happen and that's just where his head's at. And so he thinks like, he looks at me like, I just want you to have this baby so bad, but I don't think you're going to. Like, that's, he gives me this look like, like this, oh, I just, I want this baby, but you're not going to have it. Like, that's just where his thoughts are at. He thinks something's going to happen, something's going to go wrong, and, uh, it could, it very well could. So, I'm trying to be a little bit more positive, but at the same time, like, this is our one shot. I mean, yes, we have a couple frozen embryos, but uh, 
those might not work. Out of the two really good three-day embryos that we put in, only one of them stuck. So, you know, a lot of stuff can happen, and I'm not trying to be negative. It's just a stressful thing. Uh, so, let's just see how it goes. So, I'll probably update you guys in two weeks. Um, if anything else happens or whatever, I'll come on here. But, uh, just uh, hoping this little bean sticks and stays in there. And I get to finally have a baby. So, thank you guys so much. This video is over 10 minutes now. So, I'm going to let you go. Um, and I will come back on here in a couple weeks.